This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, the mayor of Hazelton stops by the show to talk about parking in the city. Welcome to FYI for Tuesday. I'm Ken Kara. Thanks for joining us. These are tonight's headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Recently, Hazelton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi vetoed a parking sign ordinance that passed through council unanimously. According to the Standard Speaker, the ordinance would charge businesses a $25 application fee for loading zone signs, $80 for installation, and $125 every year for the sign. Councilman Jeff Cassatt told the Standard Speaker that the ordinance gives business owners the option to have guaranteed customer parking or a loading zone. Here's what Yanuzi has to say as City Council gets ready to meet on Tuesday night. Council passed a sign ordinance which is very uh, financially uh, harmful to the businesses downtown uh, and throughout the city. If they want to sign, they have to pay a hundred and some dollars, and and then if they want to renew it every year, they have to pay a hundred and some dollars. And I thought it was uh, exorbitant, so I vetoed it. And there, the question was, it was a 5-0 vote. Why would you veto it? Well, this is the only way I can express my objection to it. It will be on the records that I objected to. And if they pass a 5-0, they pass a 5-0. And then it becomes law. But it's it really uh, has no effect because of the new meter system we're going to put in. We can actually put meters in front of people's uh, property that won't be any charge to them. So why would they pay that $125 for a sign? Also on the agenda tonight is a lease agreement with DHD Realty Holding LLC for the top section of Hazleton's downtown parking garage. Because when the DeAngelo's first came to uh, decide to go downtown, and I had been talking to them for, for about a year, their main concern was parking. They looked at downtown, these are beautiful buildings, a lot of offices can be remodeled, restored well, but where do I put 100 people? And uh, we said, well, there's parking all over. No, he wanted to make sure his people had parking. And the only way I could assure him was to give him parking in the garage. But we made a deal. Uh, he'll rent the whole garage if I repair it. Uh, it's been in the hands of the Hazleton Parking Authority, who has never had any money, who let it deteriorate because they just couldn't afford to do it. So I took gaming money, a million six, and put it into that property and they're going to start uh, as soon as this lease is signed to remodel it. They'll be in A1 condition, and then they'll rent the whole garage, and uh, we should be okay as far as parking uh, income for the city. The Hazleton City Council meeting gets underway at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Controversy erupted after code enforcement in the city of Hazleton issued a citation against the Diamond Fire Company on North Church Street. The citation was for a failure to pay a business license fee. Diamond Fire Chief John Paletsky says he was shocked since the fire company has and continues to make thousands of dollars in improvements to the building, which is done not which is done in their on their own in an attempt to save the city money. But Mayor Joe Yanuzzi tells FYI that there was a misunderstanding by both sides. We were very disappointed. We felt betrayed by our own city that they would cite us for not paying a um, part of the fees that are part of a business license in the city. Now, we do pay our uh, game a chance since we do sell raffles and tickets, but other fees have always been waived by the city. And this year, when we approached them, it seems that due to inaction, it went as far as the magisterial court. And uh, yesterday, uh, Monday, our company president, John Nellis, received a citation uh, from the district magistrate court uh, with fees, fines, and court costs associated with it uh, pertaining to uh, the fees that are, are owed the city. And here we build in for three licenses, or uh, two licenses and one inspection. And the business license they don't pay for, we exonerate them. The health inspection, we do it, but don't charge them. We exonerate them on that. But the gaming one, uh, we have to. So that's a $50 uh, charge. It was in the pile of all the delinquents, and they just put them and sent them up to Zola, and Zola sent them out. And theirs got in the pile. But it's easily solved. Just We pulled the... Uh, 
the complaint and paid a fifty dollars and it's over. Again, the misunderstanding has been corrected and the Diamond Fire Company will not have a date in magisterial court. Will Pennsylvania have a new budget in place by the June 30th deadline? Lawmakers are not optimistic. Governor Tom Corbett has said he will not sign a budget and not put it into place until major legislation that overhauls public pensions and sale of alcoholic beverages makes its way to his desk. No major action is expected this week. Press Secretary Jay Pagni said that the governor is prepared to stay as long as it takes until his goals are achieved even past the June 30th deadline. As we told you yesterday on FYI, a major drug raid took place in Schuylkill County on Monday. In all, 17 people were served. However, 20 are facing drug charges. The arrests were coordinated by Schuylkill County District Attorney Christine Holman, along with Tamaqua Police Chief Rick Weaver and members of the County Drug Task Force. Hazleton's annual downtown farmer's market is returning this summer, but on a new day. Starting July 11th, the farmer's market will now be held on Fridays instead of Saturdays in the city of Hazleton. The market will run through August 29th. Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce President Mary Malone says that since the day has moved to Friday, more vendors have signed up to take part in the popular summer tradition. Vendors interested in participating in the farmer's market should contact the Chamber of Commerce. I would love to sit down with the four high school students you are about to see for a game of Trivial Pursuit, but I'd have no chance against from left to right in the front row Tara Koskulitz from Marion Catholic High School, Alexa Austin from the Hazelton Area High School, RJ Cupshaw from MMI Prep, and Rachel Moon from the Weatherly Area High School. They were honored by the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce for being the top academic students from their respective schools. Luzerne County Chief Solicitor Attorney David Pedry was the keynote speaker at the event. Tonight we have news from the desk of the Freeland Municipal Water and Sewer Authority. The authority will hold a work session at 6.30, followed by a regular meeting at 7 at the authority office on Birkbeck Street in Freeland. Well, for more local news and sports, turn to our media partner, the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Now, tomorrow we'll talk with the sports editor from the Standard Speaker about a story his team is working on that I find very interesting. So tune in for that, and in the meantime, visit standardspeaker.com for breaking news. Coming up on FYI, Janine stops by twice in the next block. First, she has her Care for Kids segment with Luzerne County Children and Youth, and then we power up as she lets us know what Greater Hazleton Power is getting ready to do this summer. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Welcome back. We are in your community today on FYI, and every Tuesday we talk about children and it's called Care for Kids here, a segment that we started a couple weeks back here on FYI News 13. And normally we have someone on from Luzerne County Children and Youth to educate you about adoption and foster care. But today we have a new group with us, Loftus Vergari and Associates. And Lisa Carleon Buffer is with us now. And thank you so much for joining us because caring for kids is such a process and there is so much out, um, help out there that we want to educate people on what this is all about. Now, what is your association um, with Loftus for Gary, and what is Loftus for Gary and Associates all about? Well, thank you for having us, first of all. Um, Loftus for Gary and Associates is a private, small private foster adoption counseling um, post permanency agency in the okay. Wilkes Bear area. Um, and we are about, as far as the post permanency services, helping families who have adopted, providing them with supportive services. Um, the families, with formal adoptions, it can be um, private, international, through the child welfare system, kinship care, permanent legal guardianship. Mm -hmm. So many different forms of families. Okay, so once the child is adopted or seeking care, if I should say, they have ways of having support. It's not like, here's your adoption, see you later, bye. So what are, some of, what are some examples that you could give to me that people would contact you for these services? Um, there's families, uh, the child may have experienced a trauma prior to the adoption and the parents, um, they want to find out what reactions are normal or how mm -hmm. to respond. There's grandparents raising grandchildren who um, they need help navigating the childcare system. Um, they have frustrations with the dual role of being a grandparent and a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, we refer to victim's comp 
Pennsylvania Victims Compensation Benefits to help pay for specialized counseling. Um, all traditional stressors, you know, new job, new community. Uh, so this anything break can be, can think of. okay, this break can be anything. So maybe, you know, like you said, it's a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle that took over watching um, this child and has legal rights to this child. And, you know, they need a break either financially to support this child in some extracurricular activity, or again, any financial uh, burden that they might have with this child. Yes, um, between uh, the, the advocacy part of it, the mm -hmm. education, there is also respites, which um, every family's definition of a break is different, mm -hmm. so um, we help them create a, a unique respite, which may be uh, funding for a YMCA membership, it might be summer camp, um, it may be dance lessons or even traditional respite where it's in-home care or overnight care. Okay, there is a toll-free number that anyone can call. See, this is all new to me too, because the Luzerne County Children and Youth Agency is one agency, you're another agency, but anyone under the SWAN and umbrella can contact this phone number, correct? Correct, any family who has formally adopted, mm -hmm. um, it could have been an adoption 17 years ago. Okay. If they have a need for um, help and support, all they have to do is call. 1-800-585-SWAN. All right, well thank you so much uh, for joining us here. Again, every Tuesday, it's Care for Kids right here on FYI News 13. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Okay, let's play the cloud game. I see Beaver Stadium. I see Jurgen Klinsmann. I see a Jimmy's hot dog. This wonderful time-lapsed video is from our Mike Terleski. Thanks, Mike, for the awesome shot. Unfortunately, we have to cover it up a little bit with your local forecast from the National Weather Service. I see a panther. Tonight, a chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly after 2 a.m., as we dip down to 66 degrees. Ten, and then on Wednesday, there is a chance of showers and thunderstorms, 50% chance. But other than that, it will be a sunny day at 83 degrees as summer is creeping in. On Wednesday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Again, the low is 62. On Thursday, yet another chance of showers and thunderstorms. The high is 80 and the chance for rain is only 30%. Thursday night will be clear with the low at 55. Friday looks like a great day, sunny, a little bit cooler at 76. Friday night, there is another chance of showers and thunderstorms with the low at 55. Saturday, chance of showers and thunderstorms again, 75 degrees. And Saturday night, 30% chance showers and thunderstorms, 57 degrees will be the low. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat with their ice cream and yogurt or some hot food with their burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, located on Route 93 in West Hazleton. Stop on by today or give them a call at 570-455-5362. And thanks for joining us here on FYI. Our community segment today deals with a group called Power, and we're professionals organized working to enrich the region. And Lori Ogurkas is with us because there is an event coming up. It's the first summer event we're very excited about it. it's happening on wednesday yes we're very excited we're going to be hosted down at the adoras i know everybody knows that it's a, a new restaurant within the area it's at the former stagecoach mm -hmm. and they've been so kind to us to reach out to us and um, we're hosting our first event for the summer there now, when people say there's nothing to do, well, we're giving you something to do. I actually checked out Theodora's last week and twist my arm, and they have heaters. If it's cold out, they have covers. If, if it's raining out, so there really is no excuse not to come out to this event. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. It's from 5.30 to 7.30. It's only $10, $10 mm -hmm. which um, covers just the cost of the event. There's going to be appetizers. And we also got some great entertainment, which I'm really excited about. His name's Bird Presley, and he is a phenomenal singer. He actually played with the Platters back in the day, uh, toured the country, tour toured overseas. And he's actually a good family friend who's um, going to come and sing for us that night and DJ. So we're going to have some tremendous, tremendous entertainment. And it's just going to be another great event for the area to um, get some business professionals together, a community uh, people together to just um, raise awareness and, and have a lot of fun. Now, this is open to everyone, and we like to tell everyone that power is really a melting pot. It's for everyone. 
And when we say business professional, that could mean teachers, that could mean nurses. You don't have to be in a suit and tie all day to attend this event. Absolutely not. I know my number one job is as a mother at home to my five children. So that I consider also as being a professional within the area. It, it really does range uh, you know, among so many different things. And it's just good people coming together, um, getting to know people, uh, and, and again, having a great time. All right, so again, we expect to see everyone there. Wednesday, it's going to be at Theodora's. It is the old Stagecoach building on Route 309. It's a good way of supporting a new business in Greater Hazleton. And again, it's from 5.30 to 7.30, $10, and we get to see all this entertainment that you would be paying, uh, you know, a lot of money to see elsewhere. Absolutely. All right. So we'll see you there. And thank you, Lori, for joining us. And that is our community segment here on FYI. Looking to do something fun for the week or weekend? Well, the annual Northeast Fair is coming to Pittston Township Tuesday, June 17th until Sunday, June 22nd. It's located just off Route 315 on Suscon Road, about one mile from Interstate 81 and 476. For more information, you can call the phone number right there on your screen. Here's some information for you. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers. The daily 835, the big four 1907, Quinto 30717, and Treasure Hunt 5, 6, 16, 23, and 30. We'll talk about the World Cup when we come back in sports. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Valley Babe Ruth in Butler Township is hosting the state 15-year-old Babe Ruth Tournament and they are looking for some sponsors to help out. They are expecting between two and 3,000 fans at the event. The tournament starts on July 1st and will run for seven days and will feature nine teams from all over the state. The local 15-year-old Valley Babe Ruth team gets an automatic bid in the tournament just like Brazil in the World Cup. And just like the World Cup, they need sponsors to help offset some of their costs. Umpire fees, we're looking at over nearly $1,800 in umpire fees for both uh, tournaments. Concession stand that has to be stocked and maintained. Gas for the grills. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization and all our monies come from within the league and outside donations from companies that are faithful to us and help us each year with signage for around our fields. Also, uh, People would donate lime to us. Infield dirt, infield dirt itself costs over nearly seven, eight hundred dollars for one truck full of dirt. And nowadays, everything costs money, and that's where we're standing. And from for people coming from across the state to our area, we want to give our best showing that we can. To donate, you can contact the tournament director, David Marchetti, who you just heard from, by email or by phone. So maybe you heard, but the U.S. men's national soccer team beat Ghana 2-2-1 last night in their opening game of the 2014 World Cup. The U.S. scored in the first minute, but a Ghana equalizer in the second half silenced the pro-U.S. crowd. Then in the 88th minute, substitute John Brooks headed home a Graham Zuzi corner kick to give the Yanks the three points. If you watched the game on ESPN, they showed how a large group of fans in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, reacted to the game-winning goal. There was also a joyous reaction at Sammy's Bar and Grill in Hazleton, where I watched the game. Last week, we did a feature story on the owner, Sammy Atea, who played professional soccer in Egypt. Here's Sammy's thoughts on the U.S. victory. But how do you think they performed, and, and what do you think of their chances now after they get three points? I think they were very aggressive. They played very well, and fortunately, the injury, early injury. And uh, I think they'll one more win. They definitely going to advance in the second uh, round. So Sammy believes. Now the injury came early for the U.S. and it was forward Josie Altador. So again, the U.S. survive a dangerous Ghana team and now they are getting ready for Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal on Sunday. And we have two tweets of the day. One is about soccer. It comes from Alexi Lawless, a former U.S. national team player and current ESPN analyst. After the U.S. win, he said, no, it wasn't progressive or new, but I don't care. It was American. It was who we are. It was beautiful. Now, the second tweet is from Tony Gwynn Jr., who plays for the Phillies. He tweeted this after his father, Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, passed away on Monday. He said, today I lost my dad, my best friend, and my mentor. I'm going to miss you so much, Pops. I'm going to do everything in my power to continue 
to make you proud. And that's sports for Tuesday. Happy Wing Night. It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening. The Society for Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration will be holding their 2014 meeting and 100th anniversary celebration Thursday, June 19th at the Valley Country Club. Last day to RSVP for this event is today, Tuesday, June 17th. More information, please give them a call, 570-325-5338. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Thomas B. Saracero, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Saturday at 9 a.m. in the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Doris Klein, formerly of Shenandoah, the Lukovitz Orovitz Fell Funeral Home, is in charge of arrangements. Sophia M. Donella of Mahanoy City, the Louis D. Truskowski Funeral Home, is in charge of arrangements. Michael Halecki of Hazleton, Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. Irene A. Copeland of Cunningham. Funeral is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Paul J. Higgins of Hazel Township. Services will be held privately and under the direction of the Harmon Funeral Home. And Roger Allen Durr of Cunningham. Services will be held privately and under the direction of the Harmon Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Tom Jambetter of Mahanoy City. Tom, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-459-9813 to win your free movie. So that's another night of FYI News 13. Thanks for watching. We will be back on Wednesday. Until then, take it easy, everyone.